I'm Rebecca Neen from Carnot Ales in Sorrento, BC. I am Roxanne Carre. I'm from Ruby Ales in Port Moody. Alberta. Uh, Nova, Nova Scotia. Scotia. Oh, cool. So the question was. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we brew? Uh, I brew at Crono Gales. We're in Sorrento, which is on Shishwab Lake, in uh, just north of the Okanagan, in the southern interior of BC. It's a beautiful spot. That's Where do you brew? I'm at Moody Ales. So okay. we're in Port Moody. We're just on the basically the the Port Moody Inlet. You're urban. Well, kind of. Yeah, it's like it's a weird mix. It's like Port Moody is urban, but it also is very small town. <laughs> Because it's a very small city, and it's in the mountains and the hills and the ocean. Mm -hmm. Like, I look out my window, and I see the ocean. And behind me is bob uh, bobcats and cougars. And, like, there was two cougars spotted on the SkyTrain station. This <laughs> Just Wait, walking cougars. down the tracks. <laughs> and, and, and they weren't human cougars. No, were... no, but, like, actual cougars. <laughs> Anyways, so we're, we're kind of in the small town slash urban. Oh, okay. center. So it's not as not as small town as I was as I would like, but it's also like pretty pretty chill. So right. what's really cool about Permuti is it's a very small place, and it was very industrial. So we have a sawmill there. We have um, the ocean inlet that comes towards mm. us. Like if you go north, it's Indian Arm, but if if you keep going east, it's it ends in Port Moody. Mm -hmm. And so there was, there's lots of lumber and, and stuff down there, lots of industry, and they all of a sudden allowed um, breweries to start happening. Whereas in the Tri-Cities, no other cities allowed this. So Coquitlam mm -hmm. didn't allow it, Poco didn't allow it, but Port Moody decided that it was okay if you made something, you were allowed to sell it at your venue. You were allowed to have a tasting room, which is huge. Mm -hmm. So breweries started popping up just a couple years ago. So Yellow Dog started. They were the very first. And Dan and Adam of Moody Ales, they started planning Moody before Yellow Dog even opened. So they didn't really know how it was going to go, but they started planning it. So Yellow Dog opened, Moody Ales opened. <laughs> then the next summer, Twin Sales opened, and then Parkside opened. And then all of a sudden, there's four breweries within a five-minute walk. Wow. Beside the ocean, there's a huge park. There's a handmade ice cream shop down there. There's two dog daycares right on the strip. There's a shoreline trail that wraps around the inlet. There's a kayak rental place. So you can go and you can rent kayaks, you can rent paddle boards, you can get ice cream, you can get beer, you can drop it, your dog off, you wow. can play with your kids. There's an outdoor pool, there's playgrounds. It's just crazy. And now <laughs> there's a great. sky train. <laughs> That's great. You, and you, so our place, you can drive to it. We have no public transit. Um, so yeah, you can drive. Yeah. Um, you can't really walk because there's nowhere to walk from. Um, our township is 625 people. Our closest neighbors are coyotes. And um, there's no ice cream. That's okay. <laughs> we have coyotes. But we have beer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, the, so the name of the brewery is an old Irish word. So a crinogue in Irish is a small house um, built on stilts on the edge of a lake. Um, and usually they're, they're thatched roofs and wattle and daub siding and then built on a bunch of piers about 40, 50 feet across. And they would house an entire family, their livestock, all of their goods, um, accessed by a causeway or sometimes a, a plank bridge. And in Scotland and Ireland, they built that way primarily because they didn't have much by way of land that you could grow food on. So it became really important to them to save the food growing land for actually growing food on and to put their houses somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And in Scotland and Ireland, your choices are bog, rock, arable land, or water. Well, rock is not very helpful. <laughs> Bog, yeah, well, if you like sinking a lot, it's also, you know, maybe not so useful. Um, arable land you need to grow your food on, so that left water. So you sink pilings into the edge of the lake and put your houses on there. So the reason we named the brewery Crinogue was to both have a Gaelic name that people could pronounce so they didn't have too many consonants and vowels in conjunction with each other, um, 
but also it gave us a way to accentuate that part of what's really important is the wise use of our farmland and making sure that our farmland is there to grow food on and not just to put houses on or golf courses or highways or all the other things that Canadians really like to do with their food growing on. Um, what, what distinguishes us from a lot of other breweries is, well, first of all, we've been around for 17 years, which is a little bit more pedigree than some. Um, but more importantly, we're Canada's first certified organic brewery. We're Canada's first on-farm microbrewery. Um, and we have a growth cap strategy. So our whole plan is we, the farm exists pretty much in the middle of a 10 acre farm. We grow our own hops, we have sheep, we have pigs, we have chickens. All of them live on what comes out of the brewery. Um, they interact with the hops, which are the main production input for the brewery, but we also grow herbs and spices and things that, grow, that go into the brewery as well. Um, all of the waste, which is not actually waste, it's just, it's a byproduct from the brewery, it becomes something that's useful on the farm. So our gray water, is reused for irrigation water. Our spent grains are used to feed livestock. Our spent hops and our spent yeast, and some of the spent grains go to our compost, which goes back on the fields to feed the hops, which go back into the brewery. Um, we've kept our footprint deliberately really small. Because we only exist on 10 acres, we have our own well. We have a very limited biological area that, that is our stewardship responsibility to keep healthy. We can't just draw on that and expand beyond what that can sustain. And sustainability in that sense for us is about making sure that it's going to be there not just next year, not just in the next couple of months, but 25, 50 years from now. So we can't pull all the water out of the aquifer and deprive our neighbors and ourselves of water and deprive our own farm of the water. We can't um, make a footprint bigger in land mass and resources consumed than the farm can actually sustain because we'll be <coughs> dying. We'll behave, be behaving like cancer. That's not our job. What drew you to the brewing industry? <laughs> I want to hear more from you. <laughs> I want to hear from you. Can I go work on your farm and live there forever? <laughs> Well, you certainly come and, come and check it out <laughs> see if you want to. It's a lot of work. <laughs> that's what I love and that's what I want to do. And anyways, that's sorry, great. that's just, I want to be her forever. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> yeah, but I want to know who okay, you are. So, I, so I, I used to be are. a gardener. I was a horticulture. <clears throat> I love plants and I love nature. And I just, I, I feel like people don't appreciate what we have. It's like the, what we consider beautiful is always nature. Like when you think about people talking about what's beautiful, they're like, oh my god, it was so gorgeous there. They're talking about nature. Like they're talking about trees and plants and air and water and clear water. But yet they don't actually think about that in their daily lives. Mm -hmm. It's like if you think that's beautiful, why don't you work towards getting that? <laughs> like if that's what you want. But you don't think about that ever. Anyways. Yeah. So what, what drove me towards brewing, um, I was a gardener. And I love making my own stuff. Like, I'm a do-it-yourselfer. Like, I want to be able to make my own things and do it myself and, like, sustain myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I started making wine. And I wanted to learn how to make beer. And as soon as I learned how to make beer, I was, like, immediately hooked. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. This is so Wait, this great. is really fun. <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> And so I was a gardener, but I was a seasonal gardener. So the mm -hmm. winters, I was just off work. And I didn't know what to do with myself. I tried, but it's like, <laughs> you get bored really fast. And so I was like, okay, if I can work at a brewery in the winter, maybe I can garden in the summer and do both. Yeah, yeah. That's but as soon as I started working at a brewery, I was like, nope, this is where I'm going to stay forever. Because mm -hmm. I got hired at Moody Ales when they first opened, and our owners are just some of the most amazing people I've ever met. Um, Adam said, don't do something, like don't be good at something that you don't like. Yeah. It's like, make sure that you're working towards what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And 
Tell me what you want to do and we'll help you get there. That's I want to brew the perfect. So I'll make sure that you get there. And so they helped me get there. And I haven't looked back since. <laughs> so you've been brewing yourself primarily for how long? Um, I started brewing about five years ago. That's great. So it's not, I'm still really new. I'm still learning every day. You always keep learning oh my every gosh. day. God. It's <laughs> amazing. And, and as soon as I started doing <clears throat> tasks, that's really what opened up the whole world of experimentation and really amazing ingredients like finding, like growing. I love growing my own plants and using the plants that I grow in my own garden. Yeah. Like, I don't want to yeah. use anything that I don't know what it is. Like, I won't use extracts, I won't use anything. It's a totally different flavor for one thing, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you don't totally. if you don't know where it came from and you don't know what it's going to really do, then how can you use it? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like if I can go and pick something mm -hmm. and I can smell it and I can taste it and I'm like, yes, that's what I want to use in my beer. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. So it makes beer more real and it makes it, it just makes it more meaningful and it makes it, it's more special. Well, I kind of fell into brewing. Um, <clears throat> my, my start in brewing was... Partly as a gardener, actually. Cool. So I started in brewing partly because Brian, my partner, was the home brewer in the family. And um, I was the gardener. And he kept taking what I had pulled out of the garden for dinner and putting it in the beer. <laughs> which got really annoying. <laughs> and so I was like, really? Carrot ale. Okay, well, I really had a salad in mind, but okay, fine. So I started growing hops. And hops, hops are fantastic. They're, from a gardener's perspective, they're insane. You we can't stop they them. grow a foot a day. They're totally out of control. They're like triffids. They're, they're... You come home and they're like... I occasionally have nightmares where they have taken over my world and crawled in my window and they're killing me. But it's okay. Because then I have a hoe and a tractor and things. So it's all right. And they're hops. <laughs> and they're yeah. hops. And they're More great. Hops. And I can make beer out of them. Yeah, so them. yeah, I started growing beer yeah. and discovering how awesome hops were. <clears throat> and that, and I was already fermenting my own bread and making other things. So it kind of led into other kinds of fermentation. And when we started the farm, my primary role theoretically was as the farmer and Brian's role was as the brewer. And as time went on, I kept kind of crawling into the brewery and doing more and more fermentation and playing around with yeast and the casks as well. I think there's something really magical about a cask in particular because with it, with a full batch of beer, you've got this happening and this happening, it's all under control and you've got it going from this tank and you've got all these other, you've got processes that you've dialed in and you understand and it's all very controlled. And when you put a bunch of things into a cask, you seal it up, and you have no idea whether it's worked or not. <laughs> you have a general level of trust that you, have, that you, you know, you know what you're doing, yeah. and you follow the mm -hmm. correct process, and the temperature is correct, and things are going to ferment, and you're mm -hmm. not going to explode and cover the cat in yeast, which has happened. Um, and, you know, you're going to end up with something that's drinkable. Mm -hmm. But there's always that moment when you tap that cask, like, and you go... Yeah, okay. Is it going to be okay? Or did I really, really, really make a it's mistake? Like, it's a really closed ecosystem, and you can't taste it or know about it until exactly. the moment. And, it, and for me, because my other, my other media is fiber arts, and I really like parts where I don't have full control. And I think that's where fermentation is really fun for me as a brewer, because I'm not in control. I'm cooperating. With not just one organism, but a whole group of organisms. And a whole biome, in fact. And it's like being a gardener in that fact, right? Where you're, like as a gardener, you're actually just fostering a whole biome. And going, okay, well, here's the things that you need to grow well. And here's the things that you grow well. And I hope you guys get along. And <laughs> Yeah, you're trying to set it up properly. You're like, okay, I think this is what you need. And I think if I add this, then you'll be okay. But I'm not 100% certain. Yeah, and I and I'd like to go out on a limb and introduce you to Mr. Ginger. <laughs> yeah, I have lemon. You like each other? Is it okay? Is it too hot? Too yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, really, it's, it's yeah. so friggin' fascinating. Yeah, and and that level of uncontrol, I think, is really is really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you learn so much from it. Totally. 
Well, my experience as a woman in brewing um, has been varied. <laughs> uh, from one of my first experiences, which was um, going with Brian to uh, uh, competition, actually, that was sponsored by Sailor Haggers back in the day, and sitting down next to a bunch of boys from the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Malted Police, who were spouting a bunch of, frankly, BS about, I can't actually remember what the subject was, but I do remember saying, like, uh, oh, Okay, well, that's not actually right. So I turned around to my bar stool and I said, um, yeah, except for the things about whatever it was. And they literally turned their backs on me en masse and said, girls. Well, I grew up as a farmer. I'm fairly accustomed to being a female in a man's world. <laughs> but that really pissed me off. And the level of sexism in the brewing industry over the has been pretty drastic um, from tap handles that were essentially two boobs on a stick to beers with names like Panty Dropper um, to men that just simply refused to believe that somebody who had ovaries could actually make beer and could lift a keg and could maneuver things. It's been joyful over the last, I'd say, six to eight years to see the radical shift in the industry, really radical, to the point where we, not only do we have a significant number of women who are involved at the production level in brewery, in brewing, so, so they're, you know, these are not the girls in the t-shirt contests anymore, we're the women who make the beer. But not only that, we have men who are saying, our job is to make sure that you're making good beer and to put on a festival to make sure that you're, to showcase your beer. And that is a level of respect and honor that is really deeply appreciated. And significant respect goes to men who have the balls to be men about it and understand that relationship. <laughs> That's all I have to say. It's like, I'm so honored to be able to work with people like you that have, you've been around in this industry for way longer than I have. And you still have the respect to be like, nope, you guys get to shine today. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to do this for you. And like, it's amazing. And like, to get to meet people like, like you that have been doing this for over 30 years, and I'm just a newbie at it. And I get to... It's like it's okay to be I emotional. To That's work, what it's about. I get to work with people like you guys, and like I get to talk to you guys and learn from you guys, and I get to ask you any questions. Like, how do you do this? How do you do this? And you take the time to let me know what you would do in that situation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is one of the only industries where I would ever get this opportunity. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I think I think we've gone from an oppressive amazing. industry to a supportive industry, and I, I think there's still a yeah. lot of strides. Totally. There's a lot of places where this industry seriously <laughs> falls down. But equally, there's some amazing places where people of all genders stand up so well. And it, it, is, yeah. it, it is a place where we value creativity and, and integrity. Integrity in terms of what we do. Apart from the whole business end of things, but integrity in ourselves as brewers and in what we value as brewers and what we're carrying forward, that's valued in a way that I think is, it's not there in a lot of other, in a lot of other places. Mm -hmm. And it's part of what makes craft brewing really special. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. What message would you give? to so other women entering the industry. I guess because I'm so new, I just know that if I look back like three years ago, I would never, ever imagine that I could be here today serving a beer at a cast festival <laughs> and getting to talk to some of the, the most amazing brewers in the industry. I just say like, just, just go for it. Like, yeah. learn as much as you can and talk to as many people as you can and 
don't be intimidated by what you think you can't do because yeah. you can do it. Like if you're passionate enough about it, just do it. Mm -hmm. Because that's what everyone here today has done. Like whether you're male, female, whatever, wherever you came from, all it takes is just the passion and learning and the, the desire to make great here. That's, that's all it takes. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. And it's so fun because like, like what you were saying, the industry is incredibly supportive. Like it's, it seems intimidating and there's a lot of people out there that would be like, you're a woman, you like beer? And I'm like, yeah, I like beer. What? And they'd be shocked by it. But most people, most people know they're going to be supportive of you and they're going to help you along the way. Just go for it. So I, I work at Moody L's and I'd meet all the customers there. If I went down to say Yellow Dog or Twin Sales and I'd have a beer there and I knew everyone that worked there, like we're all mm -hmm. friends, we all love beer. And some of the customers would see me and they'd be like, oh, why are you here? <laughs> and they'd be like, I'm, and they would be like, they would be afraid that I, I would see them and they, then they Oh no, like, I'm at your competition. Yeah, I'd be yeah. like, I'm, yeah. they'd be like, are you allowed to be here? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, of course we are. <laughs> it's a collaborative and I'm like, community. Can you imagine a yeah. chef that only ate his own food? Yeah. You would not trust that person. Like you, you, you need someone that knows what's out there. It's the same with beer. Mm -hmm. And I never expected that in that industry. And so you'll get an entire mix of people where it's like everyone supports everyone and loves beer. And I have to remind people on a daily basis. We're all beer drinkers. We're all craft beer drinkers. We all are really, really excited that there's four breweries on the street. I think the most exciting piece for me about the craft brewing community, and it, it's the same in the farming community actually, so my, my two halves fit really well together, cool. is that it's a cooperative community. It's not a competitive community. So it's the same thing, you know? Yeah. Well, of course I go to my friend's farm and I buy his beef, because I don't have beef, and he's got great beef, and I love the way he treats his animals, and why would I not do that? And I'm going to go to him, and I'm going to learn as much as I possibly can about the way he manages his pastures, because he is really, really good at that, and I can apply that to my sheep. Cool. And why would I not do that with me? Right? Why would I not come to a cast festival and say, oh, see, that one, that one is totally on. So what did she do? How did that work? What was mm -hmm. your thought process? What happened? Was this just one of those like, yeah, I don't know. I just did some things and something happened. <laughs> or was it one of those like, yeah, well, I thought about this and I thought about that and this happened and this happened and I sourced my ingredients from here. And, you know, so there's a lot of sharing and cooperation that goes on. And I, I really think that's the most important thing in, mm -hmm. in this community and among male and female and whatever other brewers there are out there. Totally. We're that, all trying to be better. Yeah, we all want to be better and we all want to be more in tune and collective about what we're doing. And the, the business side of how the organization is run, that's another, that's another issue. Like the brewers themselves, we exist on a different level. Mm -hmm. A level of community that is rare yeah. in the world. And I'm really incredibly happy so that we're celebrating it. Don't take shit. <laughs> you don't need to. It's their problem. It's not your problem. If they don't have the ovaries to get with the program. <laughs> um, yeah, I totally, it's, it's the same. Just go for it. Like, don't be afraid. Because we'll, we'll support you. Men will support you. Like we have, everyone will support you. The people that don't support you aren't worth spending the time worrying about. Yeah. Like, there you go. We'll, we'll eventually change their minds and they'll finally clue in. <laughs> like, and if they don't, they'll disappear. But yeah, exactly. It's Dinosaurs. Like, they're not they're worth gone. worrying about because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. The good people in this industry will lift everyone up. We'll all lift each other up. But we're all here to make each other better brewers. And we're all here to help each other, no matter who you are.